At the request of the candidate, Father Middleton, and with the permission of the other members of the commission, I will speak in English. Allow me to begin by acknowledging what is truly praiseworthy in this dissertation. Father Jacob, you have chosen a topic to which Luke himself attaches great importance. Second, your study is based on, is, is an exegetical study, primarily. It's based on a very close reading of the relevant texts, combining, I think in an exemplary way, both diachronic and synchronic methods of analysis. Third, you have consulted a rather broad range of scholarship in different languages, not only English, but also French and German, and Italian, and Spanish. And last, you have presented the results of your study in a very systematic and orderly way, which allows your reader to follow rather easily the steps of your argument. All of this is very praiseworthy. As for a, a general evaluation of the thesis, allow me to offer the following. <clears throat> Those who take on the task of writing a dissertation must make certain choices at the beginning. What topic to study? What questions to ask? and what methods to adopt in seeking answers to those questions. And these choices, these decisions made at the beginning, all of them have consequences. And the consequences are often not clearly seen until the project is completed. And so it's now possible for us to observe and assess the consequences of the choices that you had to make at the beginning. You chose to examine a topic that has not been ignored in the recent scholarship. The prominence of references to prayer in Luke and Acts are very, very evident, noted by many. And many scholars have attempted to interpret the significance of this evidence. Most of them have done this by relating prayer to some other theological concern or topic that is resident in the narrative. For example, prayer in relationship to Luke's eschatology beginning with the, the seminal work of Hans Konzelmann, but then continued, as you point out, by Ott and Harris. Others instead have chosen to study the prayer text in Luke in relationship to Luke's portrait of Jesus, in relationship to Luke's Christology. For example, uh, Father Feldkampfer, dissertation was done here in Rome some years ago. But you decided to do it differently. Not to relate prayer to some other topic, some other theological issue, but rather to concentrate primarily, if not exclusively, on the prayer texts themselves. And this has allowed you to perceive indications of what you call Luke's pedagogical interests. Namely, seeing prayer as part of the formation in discipleship. 
part of being a disciple of Jesus and sharing the life of Jesus and sharing in Jesus' relationship with God. And in this, I am convinced you have made a valid contribution to the scholarship. This is a top, this is an issue that has not yet, until now, has not been fully, clearly examined and exposited. So that is the, the, the main contribution of your thesis, and it's a valid one and an important one. But wherever there are good consequences, there are also less good consequences. In support of your thesis, you have attended primarily to the coherence of Luke's treatment of this topic, of this theme points of continuity and correspondence that link together the instructions that Jesus gives on prayer, the model that Jesus offers in his own prayer life, and then also with references to the prayer life of the early Christians in the book of Acts. A co the coherence of, Luke's, of this pedagogy as you describe, a pedagogy announced, enacted, and confirmed. But in your search for coherence, your study passes over points of discontinuity, unresolved tension. of Luke's presentation of this theme. We've talked about this in our conversations, and I've pushed you a little bit on that. Let me identify three of these, what I consider the important tensions or discontinuities that, that challenge us. Clearly the most developed theme, developed scene of Jesus in prayer is the scene at Gethsemane. And Luke, unlike the other uh, evangelists, it makes explicit that Jesus, in prayer, in prayer, in prayerful communion with God, is in agonia. That this is a great struggle, as you describe it, a prayer struggle. Why is this agonia at this point in his life, given all that he's said about prayer? as this joyful, consoling, unifying, wonderful communion with God. But here at the end of his life, he's in agonia in prayer. So how does that fit within the insegnamento Gesù sulla preghiera? It introduces something, an incoherence here. Second point, the delay. The delay in presenting the prayer life of the disciples. They are the, the witnesses. They hear Jesus talk about prayer. They watch him in prayer. They are the ones present for all of this. They are the primary audience of his pedagogy of prayer. And yet, they don't pray. <laughs> At precisely the moments when Jesus tells them to pray, what are they? they're asleep on two occasions. They don't pray until the very end until after the ascension. What is it that allows the disciples finally, at the very end of the Gospel and then in Acts, to begin to, to enact what they've heard and to begin their own prayer life? That is another discontinuity here. And then lastly, the new accents that appear in the prayer text in Acts. It's different a little bit. You know, as you point out, it's, the accent falls on the liturgical aspect of prayer. Also, the Christological dimension of prayer emerges. And finally, in Acts, it's a, again and again, it's a, it's a charismatic prayer. It's an ecstatic prayer. In Acts, there is launched a new pedagogy And the source of that pedagogy is the Holy Spirit. Clearly, huh? And 
and that is a, so there's there's as much discontinuity in in Acts and, and the Gospel as there is continuity. So to sum up the evaluation, part one, which deals with Jesus, his words and his his example, is much stronger than the second part, which turns to Acts. In Acts, there is a new there, yes, there is continuity, I won't deny that. But in Acts, there is a, something very new. There's a new pedagogy of prayer in, in motion under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And the newness of that is not, is less well examined. Perhaps you have another book here to write. <laughs> the pedagogy of prayer in Acts. Okay.